And I think to, to begin this dialogue is to begin ultimately with the Crown Plaza Fountain, um, the work that has um, brought Plinza to America's eyes. Um, it is unfair to start there, be, but important to begin there because I think of the, the ideas that it brings. It is a work constructed inside a formal structure that brings the faces, brings the faces and human images to your work. And I'm curious about how you brought that work, which was abstract and structural cells, empty spaces, to be filled with humanity. And this work seems to have focused that in a new way. Well, actually, uh, the beginning of my work was uh, around the human body. Uh, but suddenly, I spent quite a lot of time working with the absence of that body in a kind of a spaces where people were invited to, to go. To go. Uh, I was dreaming about the idea that the space is always inhabited by our soul, even if we are not there, our, our vibration. It was a very beautiful poem from William Blake, who said, one thought fills immensity. This idea that our thoughts are uh, filling up the space, not with uh, physical uh, aspects, but with this kind of energy that all our bodies are spreading around. Okay, uh, the Crown Fountain probably was uh, a key moment for me because uh, my intention was to try to, to do a piece a little bit high in the middle of the, the Chicago landscape, the same kind of houses, a kind of transparent houses inhabited by souls. And those souls were the people living in town. Uh, I, I, I finally filmed 1,000 faces of people and, uh, and they are moving inside or behind this kind of glass blocks that uh, made out the, the towers. Yes, it's uh, physically a steel structure on which a glass skin has been stretched. Yeah. It mirrors the architecture of our, one of our greatest architectural cities and yet asserts its independence as a thought, as a, as a structure, I think. And to see it now, it is a, a surface of glass, but it's also a surface of water for much of the year. <clears throat> well, actually, uh, this project, that it was a project uh, with the idea to use water in the public space, uh, obviously has the reference of fountains. I always uh, give this title, Crown Fountain, because mainly the crowns were the people who support the project. I like it, the old concept in medieval times that the project has the name of the supporter. Yeah. I like it. And also fountain, because fountains has a very beautiful metaphorical aspect, which is the idea that they give life. Water is life. We, our body is composed mainly by water. And, uh, and, and, and from my Mediterranean tradition, uh, well, for me it's normal to see fountains with those kind of grotesque faces, spilling water from their mouths in cathedrals and, and Gothic houses, all, all, all the gargoyles. gargoyles. Well, that is my childhood. And, and, and I was always dreaming one day to have this opportunity because contemporary architecture lose all these kind of symbols, obviously, because it's more rational or things like that. Well, I have the capacity to reintroduce things that it was existing in former times, but with real people. That, for yes. me, was very important. Well, I think one of the engagements is the way that those thousand pieces of video become integrated and flow one to another, but they're not the real face. The f it has been changed somehow. There is a, a kind of a focusing in, mm -hmm. and then somehow elongated. they're elongated. Yeah, we, yeah that, that, uh, my idea was not exactly to do the portrait of people. It was not a journalist piece in that way. It was more to catch their soul. And I always thought that this uh, uh, part of the face is the most key part. You mentioned during the dinner the triangle of the eyes and mouth. Well, uh, we did an, a crazy post-production period after the, the faces were filmed. 
because all the eyes are in the same place and all the mouth as well. The mouth, obviously, because the nasal is there, but the eyes, it was to try to keep always the same uh, level of faces. A young boy, it, probably the face is much wider and a thinner person, and, but everybody's taking the same space in the tower. Well, and it creates this magic dialogue between the two columns um, to see them facing each other, to stand in the middle, is to understand that you are between two human poles. Well, it's, it, yes, but it's more the idea of conversation. Yeah. Uh, uh, probably the mostly part of my work are dedicated to people. I love people as a concept, humanity. And, and, and I've always been interested what's happening between two persons in conversation. I, I guess it's a kind of a strange emptiness or, or energy created by. And, and well, the, the most beautiful places for me are the empty ones. Uh, why? Because they are just waiting people arrive. And uh, uh, every time uh, uh, I'm in a place where art took completely the space, I'm not really convinced that it's the right place for people. Uh, public space is not a museum, it's something different. And, uh, and, uh, and I guess we have to create places for people thanks to our art. And that it's, was the intention of that duality, that conversation. Yeah, to bring people together. And the joy of this creation, of this artwork, is the pleasure and the joy that happens mm -hmm. as people come together in our, one of our most diverse cities. And it's an audience that is collective and like a tide, it comes in, it fills up, it goes out. And the fountain itself mm. fills. But in, in that picture, it's quite interesting because you see that the, my idea of this reflecting pool, uh, which links both towers, it's also a certain, in certain kind of stage. And people take the decision to play or not. You can be out of the water and you are just contemplating the piece. But when you take the decision to walk in, you are part already of that piece. And I don't know why, when people do that, it starts to smile, which for me was a big success. Uh, I mean, I guess it's so difficult to push people to smile today. And, uh, and uh, in that way, kids really helps me a lot to, to, to understand the piece for the people in Chicago, because they were my first, my first supporters. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, they broke the notion of the, the tension of the fountain when you first approach it early morning is a wonderful time to come before people are much in the city because you experience the reflection and the faces but the city is reflected as well mm -hmm. the coming light and then as one or two people come by they don't enter the pool it's the midday when it fills with the sound mm -hmm. of the sound and the burble and the, mm -hmm. and the chaos and then it becomes this but it's, 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 it's a piece uh, with a lot of lays, uh, yes. I guess, because uh, I was very interested to create a gathering place, obviously, but it was uh, plenty of dreams mixed with it in that piece, uh, gargoyles, the idea of uh, faces as the mythology of our cities today. We are doing the city, not the architecture. The city is made out for people, not yeah. for buildings. Uh, the, the idea also to talk about the, the concept of grotesque in art, yeah. which is also something that we lost in the past. The idea of painting, when you approach the piece and you see all the little dots of light, it seems a mosaic. It could be also the, the, the work of a painter. Uh, yeah. Well, you probably remember the, the pyramid from the Mes Mesopotamia times. It's very similar, bricks, the, the bricks. Paint, decorated yeah. with colors. Well, it, as far as that piece was made for Chicago, Chicago for me was always a kind of icon in terms of architecture and art in the public spaces. And uh, it was for me uh, very exciting to imagine one step more, a new possibility, uh, because it's, well, my, my grandparents' house, Picasso, Miró, Chagall, uh, everybody's there. What I could do as a young artist, you know, mm -hmm. going to the very, very elegant to, to the house of my grandparents, just to try to offer something new, no? Yeah. 
And, uh, and that piece, I guess, accomplished a little bit that new little step. Well, you know, and it, and it reinvented the notion of what we ask of public spaces. You know, that Anish Kapoor in the, in the cloud um, being, becomes the city reinvented and our observation and wonder of it, you rush to participate in your work, to, to be caught in that dialogue. Um, that it's LED lights, it's computer driven. I understand that the faces out of the thousand faces, a computer randomly picks it. So mm -hmm. every face transitions male to female, elderly to youth, gender, race, random. and it's completely random. It's only one rule, which is not the same face after 72 hours. That ah. is the only rule in the computer. The rest is just a, a crazy finger that chews like yes. this. And, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and it's funny because people are still waiting to see their face, in the, <laughs> and it's never there. <laughs> or, or, but believe me, it's there. Yeah. But, but some others, it's always the, the same. Well, it's, 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 I, I had happened. the experience of seeing <laughs> the same woman twice, a year apart. But, you know, and I thought, did she pay someone? But it, it, it was an interesting notion of how this comes and goes. Um, but to introduce this very clear sign of the self, this, this an anonymous and yet sympathetic soul, is, is to start this decade's work and, and to sum up and yet predict. And the work in the exhibition carries forward this notion of a specific source of the heads, but to find in them something universal that these many faces of Chicago become. Mm -hmm. um, I would shift to the use of text because I think there is in this decade and in the works in the exhibition, the integration of the human image and the text, the word and the meaning, the idea and the emotion. And this piece at the BBC, um, I think, has an elegance about its singularity, and yet you relate it back to human interaction. Well, uh, when I've been invited to do that piece in the roof of the BBC Broadcasting House in London, it was really challenging because uh, it seems that the piece in the roof, it's hard to be see it from, from the street. But, uh, Finally, I guess it was something exquisite because it's a piece uh, that if you don't pay attention, you never see it. That's right. and, uh, and even I did the piece transparent to emphasize that situation. It's like a, a jewelry. It's a little thing. It's a little detail in a, in a beautiful body. And, uh, and well, in that picture, it's quite clear the old building of the BBC Broadcasting House has the radio mast on top, which was a very famous, uh, iconic element. And then just in front is the old soul church, which is also quite important that you see from Regina Street up. And then the new building behind, uh, I use the same conical shape, but upside down, yes. penetrating the building from the roof. And, and, and this is something I didn't realize, that the, the duplication of the two shapes the steeple, mm. like a megaphone at the top we talked about earlier, and then the BBC cone goes into and penetrates a yes. one floor in. This crystalline structure down in. Mm -hmm. And so at night uh, it's lit and it becomes like a beacon inside. Yeah, but, but that, that, that image which I love, well, that is from Regina Street, but that one is from the George Hotel, which is nearby. And I've been so much there that we become friends and they let me go to the roof. And it's where <laughs> I took the picture. But I, I love that it's, uh, if you are not friend from George, don't, you don't see it. Yes. And I, I think it's, it's fantastic. And that, the, the, the text, it's, uh, it's etched on the glass in a spire shape. Yes. And it's talking about this beautiful uh, sound that we can do in a glass with our finger. Uh, like life is, uh, is probably doing with our own bodies. It's, uh, it's making a sound of the, the materials. It's harmonic. It's harmonic, but it's just the vibration of the materials. Yes. And I, I think it was very beautiful. That is a, 
the view of Westminster with the piece on top. So that the text, um, opaque on a transparent skin, it circles around and mm -hmm. talks about that sound, that making that sound. Yeah. But then at night, when the BBC clicks on for the World Service at 9.30, 930 there is a beam. It's a light goes beam up. coming up, yeah. And I, yeah, I love the poetry you talk about the metaphor of the steeple like a megaphone for God, well, reaching up and <laughs> yeah, it's a very poetic moment. Well, the, the, the priest in the church was happy to listen to my explanation. I'm sure. Because <laughs> I, I, he was part of the commission. Ah. Yeah, because, well, actually it's uh, a piece like that is uh, in the skyline of the Westminster and, and it's the church uh, in front. And I remember they said, look, at, uh, for many years, God talked to us in that shape, but maybe it's time for us to, to change the position and, uh, and, and to do a new conversation. And, uh, and so, well, they give me the commission in any case. Yeah. <laughs> it convinced him, and that's half the battle. That's it. <laughs> and, and so it, it lives now inside this, this notion of something partially seen experienced as you move through the city, seen differently at night. And many of the works, I think, have that quality. No, but wait a second. I have to say that that piece in BBC was a very special experience also because when I was in the middle of the project, uh, it was not ready uh, yet, uh, the, the journalist asked me the possibility to use that project as a memorial for the journalists who die in action. I had not any idea how many journalists die in the world every day. I don't know, in wars, in action. No? And, uh, and finally, I never thought to do a memorial. I I'm, I'm even don't like much this. But they use that piece as a memorial, and that piece is dedicated now to the journalists who die in action. Yeah. And it was Ban Ki-moon finally who came to opening the piece yeah. at that time. Well, it, it becomes a... Um a repository, but then also the broadcast, the notion of, of reaching across space and time. Probably, and like it, a bezel, something, yes. that, yeah. But text has become important, and I remember this piece quite powerfully. It was um, a work seen in New York, The Song of Songs. Mm -hmm. And as this photo would imply, you moved through a text that came from The Song of Songs, and each letter independent but linked into words and phrases. And as you move through, your body brushes against this thing that's both historic and contemporary. Yeah, but I have beautiful memories of my childhood when I was going with my mother to, to the stores. And in front of the door, it was always a kind of metallic curtain, curtains yes. to avoid flies and things like that. And when you move and pass through, it makes this beautiful sound, ling, 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 ling. And it was always a dream because I always thought that poetry is, it protects us from life and from problems. That is the real protection, poetry. Yeah. And, and, and I decided to do curtains with my f favorite poets. And, uh, and that is one of the most exciting poems for me, which is Song of Songs. And, uh, and this beautiful erotic poem that this woman is walking in the walls of Jerusalem looking for his lo her lover. And, uh, and she says, and, and, and I'm uh, uh, looking for him, and when I found it, I will bring him to the chamber where my mother conceived me, which is an extraordinary idea of creation. Yeah, that, that cycle back to the place in which we are born, oh. conceived, and that we begin again with the but one way But conceive it. I mean, yeah. it's amazing. And I guess poetry has this extraordinary capacity to protect us. Yeah. And, uh, and those curtains make this beautiful sound when it, you pass through. Bling, yeah. bling. I was there with only two other people, and as, we, as I heard them behind me moving, mm. there was this gentle, the sound of metal against metal, just yeah. quiet. And it's a wonderful thing. And it, this relates then to the 29 Palms work exactly. that was shown. Mm. A series of poems, right? Well, it, exactly. It's 29 poems. Uh, uh, install it all together as one. That is always something that, like, 
well, I like very much a boot. When you see, when you walk through the boots, and you see one, three, one, three, one, three, each one is unique and, 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 and individual, but all together, it's a boot. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess poetry, it's also made out by poet, 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 poem, poem, but all together is poetry. Yeah. And I, I didn't ask the poets if they agree with me, but I put all together. Yeah. And, uh, and you can read uh, one poem from Goethe in German, and you continue with Baudelaire in French, or you, you follow uh, Dante in Italian, and you go to William Carlos Williams in English. Yes. I think it's so exciting because Visually, they look all the same, but you, when you go it deep in, each one is each. unique and individual. I so guess it's a nice metaphor of society as well. Yes, and, and it plays into the future of, of, of the work as you evolve it. The pragmatist in my, me always wants to know, am I reading vertically or horizontally? Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and one poem stops, another begins even if it's mid-line? Mm. Well, but I'm a sculptor, and uh, it's my homage to gravity. Ah. You, think <laughs> as a, you know, I, I could not imagine something like that. It's, I know. It's Poets not want my to soar, and, and sculptors <laughs> know we touch the ground. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> and that, I, I, that, that was something in the Crown Fountain as well, that when, when I've been invited and they told me, uh, we would love to have the tallest jet of water in the world. Uh, water jumping up could happen in nature, geyser, yes. but it's so sophisticated. I like when water falls down, like a tear, yes. or like uh, rain. Well, jumping up water it seems ridiculous for me. And, uh, <laughs> but, but it's true that in decoration, they love to jump water up. Mm -hmm. But uh, gravity is so beautiful, no? Yeah, it pulls down. And, and, uh, and uh, the, those curtains, I remember one group was was thinking about rain. No? Mm -hmm. Poetry is like rain, no? yes. penetrating the earth slowly and slowly. No? It's like that a little bit. In the way that poetry comes back in the mind after you've read it, a phrase, a, a sentence, a whole poem occasionally, mm. they'll come floating back in, like it mm. comes up from this history. Today you bring me to this beautiful garden up in the town with these fantastic trees, and uh, you, you told me about this uh, idea of nostalgia, you know? this mm -hmm. idea that po poets in, in these areas with the boots, and it's so important. Well, I, you cannot explain poetry with words coming up. Words should go down. They should cascade. Cascade, should flow. exactly. And they do, and, they, and you pass through the space, the time. It's your own rhythm and the rhythm, the regular rhythm of the letter, yeah. and it's that sound. That, the words move out of the relationship to each other, and then they, they come to the parts. In this work, the three graces, illuminated figures crouching, curling onto themselves, not in like that, that uh, Buddhist meditation position, on the wall. They light from within. Well, that, that it's part of, uh, of the same family of those heads that you mm -hmm. have in the museum. But that it's uh, human bodies in different positions. That case is crouched like that. And I, I like to imagine them as fat angels. That they, <laughs> that they want to fly, but they could They're too heavy. It's, well, Softig angels. No, that... because uh, I guess that happens normally in our life, that uh, our dreams go farther than our capacity. But even with our limits, we can illuminate life. And that is, I think, it's nice. We, we are not perfect, but we, even with that, we have light enough to illuminate yeah. the wall. And I like this idea, no? Those guys are in a strange position, coming out from the walls. They could not really fly. No. They have not the, 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 the beauty of an angel flying. No. But they are illuminating yeah. the space. Yeah, and then, then they, they come up, and this, this is the gesture, this contained gesture that has motivated a great many of your works in recent times. Well, this, because this figure a, compressed. A little bit, yeah, like, like the babies are in the, inside the mother. This idea that the path is interior, the, the, the important path is to oh. inside of ourselves. And yet the surface is animated again with phrases and words. 
yeah. in this... Um, in that case, it's Song of Songs again. Yeah, again, the Song of Songs. And they find their place outside, mm. um, across the city. And I think this is an interesting manifestation. These are large fiberglass figures on poles that have come to live in places. Um, well, that is also the idea of conversation, but with colors. Colors are changing in a very gentle way. And, uh, and uh, as you know, colors has a meaning. And, uh, and, and many times that happens in a conversation that everybody seems green, but suddenly one gets red. Yeah. And, and another, uh, when, when everybody, is, it seems yes. agree, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. The know, animation the, changes. The anim and, yes. Yeah. And, uh, and also this idea of uh, to live on top of a pole, it's coming from this old uh, concept from Constantinople when some people decided to live in the top of columns. And they call it stilitas because stilus was a column in Greek. And, and they was people which renounced to continue to live in society. And they just live on top of columns. They had a little basket that the, yeah. they, and people put a piece of bread, some water, and they just live about. And, and I think is that is the strange privilege of birds, that they could uh, look at to us from above. You know? and, uh, and I well, like these figures just in another level. Well, and, and it, you, you pass, see, you see daily it's, life it's, goes. It's some birds in the head of each. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, the inevitable. <laughs> but the magic for me is the way they, they're silent at, in the day. Yeah. They're, they're there, they're the like observers or meditation. And then at night they become ever-changing because the color changes each to itself in a sequence from, and it's slow, yes. Yeah, each one has a different speed of changing. Ah. But uh, I guess it's, well, it's a metaphor of how beautiful is sleep. I recommend carefully to people, please sleep more because it's when you are dreaming. And uh, dreams had an amazing uh, possibility to develop our ideas. And, uh, well, I, I love Shakespeare. And in Macbeth, uh, which is a, a great uh, definition of a sculpture, the Macbeth uh, realized that he didn't kill uh, uh, the body of somebody. He killed the possibility to sleep when he said to sleep no more. And, uh, and, and I guess that, that it's my homage to sleep, dream, the idea of, uh, uh, I guess it's the best part of life when you are sleeping. Yeah. It's the freest moment. No, 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 no. People consider that waste time, but it's not true at no. all. It's wonderful. No. These figures come down to the earth and they center themselves in a series of installations around trees. As it... It's actually my self-portrait. Ah. Yeah. It, 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 it exists on a number of levels. In the Northwest, we have many people known as tree huggers, and they, <laughs> they grab trees to, to hold them still and safe, and others see them inside this. The text then becomes, these are cast iron or aluminum? It's uh, uh, bronze. Bronze. In and that case, the text is just names of parts of our body. And I have several different with uh, music composers that it, with, this with is music composers in Japan. In Japan. And, uh, and uh, uh, also with writers, with the names of the seas, of the rivers, mountains. Mm -hmm. I love list of things. Uh, and, I, and, and I always imagine that I'm tattooed by, but with transparent ink. Ah. And, uh, and that's happened very often that suddenly somebody could read your tattoos. Life is permanently writing on our skin, yeah. but with transparent ink. Yes. But suddenly somebody could read it, and f something happens no, with that person. I'm familiar with this. <laughs> um, and these have become literally transparent, and, and they've changed scale. And um, I think this is no longer strictly words, no longer strictly one language, but these monumental figures which live differently in the day and the night um, again have had a great moment. The, most recently the Papa Johns have given one of these figures this one, this one to 
uh, city in America, and it, it has become in the news. In Des Moines. Yeah. In Des Moines, here in Miami. There are a series of experiences of light and shadow, of recognition and discovery. And you, you talk about the way th these figures were surprising. They're not self-contained. They always open somehow, being hollow and kind of investigating. That's important in the idea, whereas the, the figures that hold the tree that face the river are something else, the solidity. Well, uh, you know, uh, I told you before that I like this idea uh, to, to interact always with people. I love people. And those pieces allow me to invite them to come in, to, to really penetrate the body, the, the concept that our body is like an architecture. And, uh, and, well, as far as I always consider words or letters, uh, well, a uh, beautiful metaphor of ourselves because one single letter seems nothing alone, but in combination with others could do words. Words with words, text, text with text. It's from the smaller to the greatest, this idea of the fragment, little fragments, little stones like in the piece, yes. in the entrance. One pebble is nothing, but all together, it, you know, it, it becomes it, a field, a, space. a river, a space. And, uh, and I, I guess uh, text has this tremendous capacity. In my last uh, works, last years, more than um, sentences or quads or uh, words, I'm using just letters because it's really the cell, the origin. Yeah. And, uh, and I start with Latin letters and then now I'm working with alphabets from different uh, origins. and, and uh, well, that is still with Latin letters. This is still with Latin letters. And this is something, I thought this was beautiful in the way it, it, it allows you to understand the experience and the way that, um, in, a, in a way, early modernists and, and the Cubist and the pop artists understood letter forms have this power. But in this voice, they come, become poetry. They're not the... The, simply the signifier, mm. they're an openness, I think, into something else. And they, they, they sit mm. in the land. These are very large. How, these are it's a, that it's eight meters tall. It's eight a, meters tall, about 25 feet, 26 feet tall. Yeah. And, uh, and, and they've evolved. This is currently in Vancouver, British Columbia, in a year-long exhibition. Um, the poetics of this, the text is no longer simply Roman letters. It's no, you can, you can notice that it's a mix of different alphabets. In that case, it's eight alphabets. I, I, I did Kyrillic, Greek, Hebrew, Arabic, uh, Chinese, Japanese, Hindi, and Latin. That was the... And so the figure, we look through it, the entry to the figure is from the back. And the arms come down and... No, no, it's fr frontal. And it's frontal? But, but it's so beautiful, the transparency of the piece, that it, it makes a kind of a strange optical effect, uh, which I like very much. No, no, it's always the same concept, like your mother embrace you. No? Yeah. And people are invited to... to well, you know, the, 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 the main idea about love is to disappear inside the other, no? Some, some One concept, yeah. Yeah, I remember, I remember in Paris uh, a Japanese student at his girlfriend as a, the apotheosis of love. Well, that is probably too much, but it's a beautiful metaphor, no? Uh, when you disappear in the other. And I guess it's also a beautiful metaphor of the individuality inside society, or how beautiful the diversity each alphabet has a very strong and unique personality, but all together it produces a unique body. Yeah. Uh, well, I like this idea. Oh, it's, it's very beautiful, and the, the notion that we find ourselves mirrored in its contours mm. and comforted in its transparency as we go in. Uh, you talked about the arms often in positioned in yeah. such a way they become a bench. Yeah, it's sad uh, that then, it's not... But no, no, uh, nobody in, in that yeah. picture, yeah. but uh, people could sit inside the arms. I, I always calculate the position of the arms in the height that people could, could sit. And it's very nice when you see people sitting on uh, yeah. those arms. Yeah. It's very nice. Like a mother gathering up children. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. And also probably 
it's a kind of romantic uh, attitude uh, uh, which uh, I invite people to see the world through art. Mm -hmm. I guess art still has the capacity to illuminate life. And, and, uh, and when you are inside, you see through this kind of mesh yeah. of possibilities. And, and, well, the world seems different. Yes, just as each of those letter forms take you to a different place in the world, and yet they all become part of this babble of our world, mm. the invention of dream. The heads that have, that are focused here on the, in the uh, are focused in the exhibition, begin as photographs, and then they, they move to the computer, mm -hmm. and from there, structures like this can emerge, translucent, fully net, almost like a web of... Well, that was skin. one of the, my, uh, dreams also was to try to pass the virtual lines that I'm working normally with 3D into physical lines. And it was a terrible work. I spent nine months to do the first one. And, uh, but we got it. And, uh, and I guess it's very beautiful because uh, every line has a, a, a necessity, a kind of, it's there because should be there. Yeah. And I love in a sculptor, because when everything is in the right place. Wow. Uh, if a sculptor has a certain quality, it's because it's talking more about the bones of one body than about the rest. The mass. The mass. Uh, and, 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 and that piece is exactly sculpture, because every little uh, knot, every little detail, every little thing, it's necessary structurally. Yeah. So in order to maintain its verticality, as well as its description, mm -hmm. it has to be there, it has to be mm -hmm. part of it. It's a very different notion than these recent stone heads in alabaster, which have taken another notion of the head. In some ways, it's very much like the crown fountain. It is. Because it's the elongation. The same, it's the same proportion, like the crown fountain. So are all of their eyes in the same place because of this? No. But, uh, uh, well, the Crown Fountain is very linked uh, to the idea of uh, uh, a life, yes. the concept of a life. Yes. And, uh, and many times I said, well, I, uh, I did video on the Crown Fountain because I love, uh, in Italy, for example, the fountain of the four rivers in Piazza Navona. And I many times said, but those figures are in the same position forever. Technology today allow me to do a life things. Okay. Just finished to say that, I was not any more agree about myself, that is normal. And I said, but why not to try also with very classical materials? And, uh, and, and I start to work the same concept of heads, of faces, but with a very traditional material like alabaster. Mm -hmm. Alabaster gives me the translucent experience, which I like very much, to see through this idea of transparency. And, uh, and also, well, uh, this girl is uh, the same girl that you have in the entrance, is Nuri, is, uh, is a beautiful girl, is the, is the daughter of the owner of the Chinese restaurant nearby my studio. Ah. And every one of those girls, I'm, I'm working only girls, because I guess girl, it's, it's a very beautiful metaphor about future. I guess man is more an accident, but woman is future. <laughs> And, uh, Don't get too identified with this, ladies. <laughs> it's a concept and we can change. But it, it's the notion of the, the potency of the future inside there. The, 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 um, there's something in these heads that are... Well, they are always the eyes closed. Yes. And, and they are really uh, in a very interior path. Yes. I, I love that. And, and, and uh, uh, Alabaster has this extraordinary interior light that uh, it works pretty well together. No? And, uh, and they, they have an amazing serenity that it's another obsession to it produce peace, something yes. peaceful around. It's interesting for me in that it, these approach traditional modernist sculpture in the way that the block asserts itself in some of them. And you notice in the back row, there are some of the heads are emergent mm -hmm. They come out, but the block is still present, as if they are becoming, just well, as there are yeah, so interior and the exactly. future. 
Well, I, I guess it's nice also to preserve the, 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 the memory of the, the stone. Uh, and, and I try to, to carve the stone, but always keeping some memory of yeah. the same stone. And, and I think it's working pretty well. Well, you can see in those images. Yeah, and the, the, these are currently on view at the Nasher in Dallas and uh, through, an, through May 2nd. And, and some are still, I would point out, for a handful of you, are still available to, to bring to Portland on a permanent basis. They form a, an interesting chorus for this work, um, which is... Um, part of a monumental series of sculptural commissions that have transformed the English landscape um, from Anthony Gormley to Plenza. And this work, perhaps you could talk about the size. That's me in the corner. Yes, yeah, it is. Yeah. The Just above the word dream? The darkest one. The darkest one on, and, uh, above the word dream. Well, actually, that was a quite a beautiful commission because uh, St. Helens uh, was one of the most important mines in the uh, north of England, near Liverpool. And when Margaret Thatcher cancelled all the mining system in England, uh, well, the, 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 the little, well, this town collapsed completely. And, uh, and 20 years later, well, their they jobs and their lives are completely recovered. And, and they decided to transform the land where the mine was before into a public space. And then they chose me to, to do a piece. And finally, I did that piece, which is uh, the idea of future, this idea of a, a girl on top of the hill, which is, it has the, the eyes closed in this kind of a dreaming idea. I remember I met one of the ex-miners one day, and he said, Jaume, you can imagine when you are deep inside the pit, how dark is this place that light becomes a dream. And uh, I never thought about something so strong, you know, and because light seems so normal, that I decided to, to give that title dream. And, uh, and this girl, it's, it's in a very prominent position. You can see all the valley all around. It's a beautiful place. But she has the eyes closed, because the important landscape is inside. Yes. <clears throat> is a kind of attitude. And it brings us to in the midst of dreams, mm. which is with us. And it is that same notion yeah. of the light within, the dream within. Yeah, I guess so. But yeah. it is a disquieting and upsetting vision, I think. Well, I, I guess it's a piece which a certain... Uh, ways to be read it in the, uh, I enjoy very much the lunchtime with you uh, talking about that piece I guess we we had two different versions which is great I suppose everyone could could have their own but in any case uh, my intention was something with a lot of serenity but with this kind of strange light uh, what we have inside interior light that always uh, produce this kind of uh, isolation. We are in conversation, but at the same time alone. But maybe you can say yeah. your idea, which I like it very much, to the... Yeah, well, I... Yeah. I, well, I started with the same place, with this, this quietness, this interiority, the, the fact that those places in which we communicate to the world and the world comes to us, the eyes and the mouth are closed. They are inside the dream, and yet the words form a triangle of things that are also internal, that to look at our face, we wouldn't understand the anxiety necessarily, or ignorance, or a disease that worries us at night, that somehow those states of being revealed or suggested by the words contradict the, the, the quietude of the women but open up a possibility that makes them complex and real in this, this surreal landscape of the stone. 
and I like the notion of the triads, this kind of construct that we, we bring from our earliest time of three heads, the three entrances to the soul, the three words, each of them stacking on top of each other in an important way. It's, it, it's not that there are three different ages, the women, and yet they are different presences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but in that case also the idea that you mentioned about the triangle, it's very strong. Just walking to the museum, I saw that the entrance has the triangle from masonry. Also that uh, uh, they said uh, to Jewish three opinions. And uh, uh, number three, it's always in all cultures. And, uh, and uh, the mostly part of literature is based in number three, because a couple is happy, but it's always arriving somebody else, which is the number three. And uh, a conversation of two is okay, but with three, it could, could be fighting, okay? <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and I told you in, during lunch that uh, the piece starts with Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde was in prison because he was completely in love with a young boy, but he was in love with beauty, which is not exactly the same, but it was completely misunderstood at that time, and he went to prison in uh, Reading. And he sent a beautiful letter to authorities saying, I guess the main problems in prison are three, uh, hunger, disease, and insomnia. And, and thinking about it, you really see that it's clearly our life, hunger, disease, and insomnia. And, uh, and uh, well, I, I was really tempted to, to expand this idea in other th trilogies, let's say, or triangles. And, uh, and the other heads has other relations. No? And, and for me, I discovered in them um, the other heads are panic, anxiety, hysteria, our response to the world, but a response that one can feel internally without ever expressing, but their expression becomes an outward gesture. And the, the, other, the third head is ignorance, desire, wrath, emotions, things we feel that we may release but we hold. And each of those shape our interaction with the other, with the world. Mm -hmm. And so you find then the thing imposed, the thing felt, and the response in each of the three heads. Just as in life, our stages of our beginning, together, and the world. I found in that a, a powerful metaphor for the notion of, of the exhibition and of this moment in our lives, when we were very much absorbed in that. And those are words, combinations that you created in response and beside Oscar Wilde. Yeah, yeah, exactly like a dialogue with, and uh, well, that that picture is uh, from the gallery in New York. The the one when we started the conversation was still in my in your studio, studio. Yeah. but the best is the one from the museum. From here, yeah. I guess the the piece found an amazing place, uh, and uh, it, I'm very pleased about your installation. Well, well, thank you. Your latest work, I think, is going to be. A return to text, but a return to the world in a, in a way. It is a, a work that's being constructed now. It will open in July. In July. In Japan, in the Inland Sea, and it is Ojijima. Ojijima. Ojijima Soul. And this is a, a model, and this is the site plan. Would you, could, could you describe what you're achieving or what you're hope for this place. Yeah, it's a response well, again to place. Mm, well, the, 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 the image uh, that we saw now, it's from the shrine. It's a beauty. You, you can go to one more and probably... We, okay. It's a very little uh, fishing town in this island. Uh, but this, uh, and, uh, well, it's not work anymore. And, and, but there's a lot of visitors to come to... to to see the flowers. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's one, of the sh one of the places that 
thousands of people will go for the irises, exactly. which happened in the summer. It's famous in, G in Japan for the, those flowers. Yeah. And the, the, the boats arrive, as you saw in the precedent image, and uh, all the visitors arrive, and, uh, and they asked me to do the welcoming place for these people, and, and that is... Uh, and, and my intention was to do a kind of house representing a little bit the idea of an oyster. But the, the, the roof, it's one part, but the reflection on the water, because all the black area is water. It's reflecting the roof and making the, the second part of the shell. The yeah. shell. Yeah. And uh, the interior part is just concrete and glass, very transparent. And, uh, uh, and, and then the steel will float above the exactly, transparent roof. Exactly, exactly. And inside... And it's the shade. Of the, it's the shade. Of yeah, but the, it's the shadow. And I think, the, for me, the, the excitement for, is... These are all letters again. Mm -hmm. But they're not only kanji, no. but they are all... Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, 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 yes, it's a mix of alphabets. And uh, I'm really excited because I, I, I've got recently some pictures from the roof that it's a company in Tokyo which is working on it. And, and, and it will be a spectacular, very beautiful. But because at the same time, it's, it's very intimate. It's not really height. I'm talking about five meters tall. So that's 15 feet. Yes. Like and this ceiling. Probably, exactly. The complete. Uh, pavilion, and then it's about 30 meters long by 20. And uh, the roof, it's probably this height in the, in the end. Yeah. And, and it makes all the shape going down to the other side. And uh, I guess it would be a house in a very human scale, in something that you really even could jump on top of the roof, if you like, to look at farther. Or, 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 or if you want to walk on the water, uh, you can walk all around, or just to go inside the, the pavilion and to enjoy, because it's really the link between the harbor, the sea, and the, and the little village And behind. the village, and then people go on up to the shrine and exactly. the irises. And so it gathers people from all places mm -hmm. inside the, the babble of their voices exactly. and sends them into nature. Mm -hmm. But it reflects nature in the sense of the beauty of yeah. the water and the sky. Yeah. Well, uh, following a little bit the images that you show, you, you realize probably that uh, uh, I'm probably always talking about the same, but trying to give a different shape to those ideas. Uh, uh, the, the, the intention is to try to explore uh, places where people could meet or, or what we, do, we can do uh, with ourselves, ourselves in relationship with the others. Well, I think it's a metaphor with text, or it's a metaphor with girls with the uh, eyes closed, or it's my first architectural project, I hope will not be the last. But finally the intention was to embrace people in some ways, and uh, I could not wait to see this place with people walking. That would be a very moving moment, like yeah. in the Crown Fountain, yeah. it's a little bit the circle. Yeah. You talk in the book about the crown fountain, about that magic moment when the first child mm. jumps into the water and, they, and people move and, with a sound. And it seems to me it's a good place to stop, to sort of think about the way, as a humanist, as a romantic, you, you, know, it's, you, you, <laughs> you you've invested <laughs> a postmodern vocabulary of the figure, of the text, of the letter, and the word, with a new meaning that is emotional. Yeah, but I remember when I was a child, my, my father plays piano, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it, it was a vertical piano, what you call this? Uh, upright. Upright piano. And, and it has a kind of a slicing doors on the bottom, where I hide myself. I was probably too, really small at that time, and uh, I remember where, I, uh, and when my father was playing, probably he had not any idea he was in, I remember the vibration of the instrument. And my memories are vibrations, and then he was, uh, uh, well, he loved to read, and he always recommend me to read this book and this and that, I never did it. But the, the visual information was text, and 
I don't know, one day I remember I said, well, probably I have to incorporate all this uh, information as material in my work. And, uh, and my love for Shakespeare was that I did the, my first sculpture with text about uh, Macbeth, sleep, sleep no more. But finally I realized that it was not exactly my bed, Macbeth, it was text, text as rain. And like those shadows that are moving in function of the, the light. And, uh, and now I feel quite comfortable with my new pieces in the way to mix alphabets, because probably alphabets are the, the importance, not this book or this poet or another, but the, the place where also poetry could meet, as people, as whatever. And, uh, well, now I'm in that territory. I don't know tomorrow, but today I'm still there. It seems appropriate at this moment <laughs> in your life. Thank you all for coming. I encourage you to pick up a card for Critical Voices, uh, an ongoing lecture series in contemporary ideas and the visual arts. Thank you all. Thank you.